Thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're getting into the second conversation. We're talking about women in manufacturing. The issues bedeviling the manufacturing sector remain the same despite being a pillar in one of the places that people are looking to grow. In fact, joining me in studio now is Felice Wakiaga, CEO of Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Thank you so much for making time. You're welcome, Trevor. Just before we get into the nitty gritties, what is women in manufacturing supposed to achieve, essentially? Mm -hmm. I know it's a program, but what yes. is the aim of the program itself? Uh, thanks a lot, Trevor. The Women in Manufacturing program is a program that we set up at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers in 2017. Yeah. Uh, the main aim of the program is to see how we can grow women participation in the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. and also help them access markets and grow their businesses. Yeah. Uh, so this really comes from the fact that as a continent, Africa is actually leaving a lot on the table by not fully getting women to participate in the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, the population of women in Africa is 50%, but women only contribute to 33% of the GDP, meaning that we have an opportunity to grow the GDP by 10% by simply bringing women to the table. Mm -hmm. And we all know that manufacturing is one of those sectors that is really being championed across the continent. And uh, within the manufacturing sector, if you look at the numbers also, mm -hmm. the number of women... Uh, participating or owning manufacturing owned entities is uh, significantly small. I have a few statistics. Yeah. Um, if you look at, for example, the manufacturing farms uh, within, within the country, you'll have a percentage of maybe 30% or below mm -hmm. that are owned by women. And a lot of them are in the MSME sector meaning that their businesses are not scaling up and growing to become large yeah. corporates or multinationals. Yeah. Um, because of this, we identified this as a gap. By then, Flora Mtai was also the chair lady of the Association of Manufacturers. For the first time in 57 years, the association was led by a lady chair. And uh, we thought that it would be important to really come up with deliberate efforts mm -hmm. uh, to grow women in manufacturing. Okay. So now, according to CISPRO, which is a yes. global technology company here, I see that the Kenya manufacturing sector is aiming at growing at 15%, adding another 15% to the economy by mm -hmm. 2022. Yes. You are looking to add more women in the manufacturing sector, but as it stands, it's still mm -hmm. struggling. Mm -hmm. The challenges remain the same, right? So why do we drag them into us <laughs> a situation that has not been fixed yet? Like, the field is not level. I, I think the reality about the challenges yeah. in manufacturing is that we can't say that we wait for fixing of all the challenges to get women to participate. Mm -hmm. Because as it is, women are manufacturing, women are participating in the sector. Yeah. But we need to address the competitiveness challenges and the cost of doing business, yeah. which is something we do on a day-to-day -day basis to see how do we bring down the cost of production, how do we open markets for our products, how do we have a predictable and stable policy environment. Mm -hmm. But even as we do that, how do we ensure that more women businesses are participating in manufacturing and are being given the support to grow? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the women business, some, some of the challenges are unique also. Because something like access to finance, which is a, a big challenge, is because of, of the fact that sometimes it's difficult for women to access mm -hmm. finance because they don't hold the collateral that they require to access finance. Mm -hmm. So working with banks to tailor make finance for women, I think is critical. Yeah. And uh, also looking at how government can come in, because the reality is that we do need sometimes industrial development banks or government funds that support women uh, mm -hmm. to get into manufacturing. When you talk of tailor-make finance mm -hmm. options, what do you mean and how does that come in with mm -hmm. fair competition? I think tailor-made finance options, if you look at banking products, yeah. they tailor-make them. They'll mm -hmm. have funds. I mean, products tailor-made for women, youth, and different people. Yeah. So it is to look at the unique uh, nature of women. Sometimes the reality that the issue of collateral is a challenge uh, for all of them. Either they don't have access to the documents or they, th they don't own the property. Yeah. Um, you look at manufacturing as a, as a sector, and in this case, they would require high amounts of capital they would require significant grace periods to enable their business uh, take off before they have to repay mm. so i think banks are always tailor making finance to suit specific needs yeah. and i you've seen in the recent past a number of banks have actually come up with products tailor made mm -hmm. uh, for 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 women but then about fair competition is the main concern so for mm -hmm. example if we want to start the same business you and i and you get the financing and i don't mm -hmm. then how does that become fair as a man or as a business as a man <laughs> as a business because even now we're talking the, the about tailor making is, for think, the women i think we have to be deliberate about yeah. the issue of uh, gender equality and and women participation uh, because there's a report that was released by mckinsey in november and i think they launched it in nairobi yesterday yeah. and one of the things it demonstrates is that it will take us 140 years 
as in as a continent to reach yeah, so gender parity if we continue at this space. Yeah. So sometimes we have to be deliberate mm -hmm. about these things if we are going to address mm -hmm. and, and, and create equality. Yeah. Um, so as the Women in Manufacturing Program, what we do is then work with women uh, in terms of uh, helping them to access finance, giving them business information because one of the other things about business information is that a lot of it is shared in informal settings and yeah. because of the nature of women and the time they have to balance all their roles in society, mm -hmm. they sometimes miss out on a lot of important information that yeah. is required for, for decision making and for growing their businesses. Yeah, I was just about to go to that. How do you ensure that they're trained? Because even here at the station, I yes. struggle to get women who will come to the panel because <laughs> they have so many things that they're working around in the society. But how mm -hmm. are you ensuring that you reach even the mamambogas who's always busy but she desperately needs a training to grow a business as well um i think uh, for where where we start off is we work at different levels we yeah. deal first of all with the entrepreneurs in manufacturing uh, so the women who have manufacturing businesses or enterprises we also work with women in leadership because leadership in the manufacturing sector to be able to see more women grow participate in manufacturing mm -hmm. the policies at workplace level need to be supportive yeah. of that yeah. and you need to then ensure that you have more women rising up to leadership positions mm. to ensure that um, we are having the right debates at board level, at management level, mm. that create policies that then support this. And then we're also working with women on the shop floor within yeah. the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. So some of the things we've done, we've had um, uh, support from different partners, uh, BAT, uh, where we have had the CEO Beverly come and give a, a talk to the women uh, yeah. in manufacturing. We've also had different partnerships where we've gone to say General Motors to uh, see how Kaizen works at, yeah. uh, at the shop floor level. So that some of this information sharing uh, and, and, and support mm -hmm. does give the women who run manufacturing enterprises yeah. uh, visibility of some of the productivity mm -hmm. uh, and other programs that are being run in multinationals yeah. that they can also adopt to their local business. So if you had to pick three issues, you mentioned Beverly from BAT and yes. I also know her there. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick three issues that are bedeviling the women in manufacturing, what would they be and how mm -hmm. would you want them addressed? Uh, I think one of them, as I said, is the issue of access to finance. Yes. Um, so for that, what we would want to see is, uh, first of all, for government to also come in and provide finance. We've mm -hmm. looked at some of the numbers in terms of the financing provided, whether it's by commercial banks or government to women manufacturing businesses. Mm -hmm. It's actually below 15%. In some cases, even 1.5% gets to women. Mm -hmm. So the issue of finance needs to be fixed, and this one requires both commercial and also government to come in and provide that. Another one is the issue of uh, business development services. Okay. Coming up and tailor-making business development services for women-owned enterprises. Uh, we looked at the statistics. Out of 800 BDS services offered in the country, only 2% are tailor-made for women SMEs. Mm -hmm. So working then to develop business development services that are tailor-made for women in manufacturing is going to be critical. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is access to markets. Yeah. Um, so ensuring that we open up and prioritize uh, access to markets for uh, the women in the manufacturing sector so that we are able to then get our products, whether it's through local content into the domestic market or mm -hmm. also to the regional markets. Uh, so the program is seeking to address all this. Yeah. And a last one I would mention is really the ability to support women to scale and to scale up and grow their businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, one of the challenges is that a lot of businesses remain as micro and small. Yeah. So all these other things would support women businesses to be able to scale up. And uh, through skill, they are then able to either export to yeah. different countries, diversify the products they manufacture. Uh, yeah. So the program is also looking at creating market linkages and mm. we've been working with the uh, different partners uh, to see how we can then get some of these products uh, to companies. Yeah. Uh, last year, for example, we had Safaricom as one of the sponsors of the program and mm. we were able, there's a, bit, there's a program they run to link the women in manufacturing to yeah. that. Um, also with government, we've been having a conversation with the uh, with government on on the big four agenda like mm -hmm. the housing agenda how do we uh, also get the 
women manufacturers to supply to in, yeah. and to be roped in okay. to, to that. Before we wind up, there's a big conversation that's happening and now they want you to take on your CEO, mm -hmm. CAM Association, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, HART. Yes. People are saying that with the coronavirus outbreak, there's mm -hmm. very little that's coming into the country. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge, but mm -hmm. people are saying it is an opportunity for the mm -hmm. people, local manufacturers here to step up mm -hmm. and ensure that all those things we were bringing in can mm -hmm. now be provided locally. Yes. What is stopping this from happening? Uh, is it a practical concern, first of all? It's a practical concern because mm. I think uh, it's unfortunate what is happening about the coronavirus, mm -hmm. but what it has demonstrated is the need to diversify market supply chains. And I think Africa um, stands to benefit <coughs> from, from, from this uh, because the reality is that we have a huge population here and yeah. we're importing a lot of products from around the world. Uh, with the pandemic, I think it's going to be indicative that supply chains will be disrupted. Mm -hmm. So there's a big opportunity for us to look at how we build our local manufacturing industries and sector yeah. to be able to supply for the African market. Do we have the capacity though? We have the ability to create the capacity. Okay. Say in Kenya, for example, there's a lot of capacity that's underutilized. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at the sector averagely, for the installed capacity we have, we're maybe at 40-50% utilization mm -hmm. averagely. So it means there's room to expand that. There's room to diversify and do import substitution, get into products that we are currently importing that we can manufacture here. Mm -hmm. So we're watching this quite closely. Uh, we are part of a, a, a team that has been set out by the Ministry of Industry to just observe the outcome of uh, the coronavirus and monitor its impact to business. Yeah. But as an association of manufacturers, we're also looking at how do we going forward not just because of the coronavirus mm -hmm. take advantage of the opportunity that exists to trade within africa okay. uh, just on the women in manufacturing i want to mention that we actually have a dinner and award ceremony coming up on the 20th of march yeah. at kempinski uh, and this is going to be a big opportunity for women who are already in manufacturing who are interested to get into manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, to participate in the program and we have an international speaker okay. uh, who is a manufacturer uh, from west africa coming in on that day all right and as we wind up the how long is this program going to run the, the program it's a permanent program it's permanent. at km yes so it's the no way targets, we have an sme it's hub all the way it's going to happen all the way okay. we ju we're just being deliberate about ensuring that we increase women's participation all right. Manufacturing. All right. Thank you for making time for us. Felix Okiaga, CEO, Kenya Association of Manufacturers. I love what you said. We have the ability to create the capacity. We, we may not we have do. the capacity as it stands, we but it, we have the but ability we can to even create, create more. more. Yes. Brilliant. Thank All right. You. On that note, we have to take a quick break here on Daybreak. When we come back, I think it's time for breakfast tips.